Summary of Like a House on Fire by Kate Kennedy The novel Like a House on Fire by Kate Kennedy depicts the story of an everyday man whose life is thrown into total collapse after he is involved in an accident at his place of work. The unnamed narrator can't work and can barely move because of the terrible back pain he feels every day. After being stuck at home for nearly 16 weeks, he lies on the floor in the living room to rest his back and watch his family. The story starts with an account of how embarrassing it is for the narrator to watch his wife and kids drag their new Christmas tree to the car. The storyteller can't help but feel bad about how useless he is. When they get home, his wife Claire runs off to work as a nurse at the hospital, leaving the narrator to take care of their three children, Ben, Sam, and Evie. When he realizes that Claire has had to work more hours at her job because he can't make enough money to support the family, he is once again ashamed of his lack of skills. The narrator climbs the stairs to the attic to find the Christmas tree decorations because he can't stop his three kids from watching TV. His doctor told him not to do anything active, and as the narrator pulls the nativity scene toward him, pain shoots through his body, causing him to drop the box and break everything inside. The narrator tells his kids to turn off the TV and help him decorate the tree because he wants to save what's left of their family's Christmas traditions, but he is unhappy from pain and shame. When his youngest child, Evie, sees how much pain he is in, she gives the narrator a cushion and tells him to lie down. When Claire gets home, the narrator and his wife have a quick laugh about the nativity set, but it's clear that she's tired and angry. When the narrator moans to her about the mess in the house, she snaps at him, telling him to get over his excessive need for control and reminding him that he should have gotten over it by now. The narrator is sad about how far apart and tense things are getting between him and his wife. He thinks back to how happy they were before he got hurt. He thinks about how their marriage is like a house on fire and could end at any moment. While Claire is working at the hospital on Christmas Eve, the narrator looks up his symptoms on her laptop and sees that she has looked up back pain psychosomatic in the past. During dinner with his kids, the narrator complains about how fast they are growing up and compares it to the pain in his back. Later, as he slowly climbs the stairs to bring the Christmas stockings to his children's rooms, he wonders if his hurt might have been more mental than physical. Once he gets upstairs, he has a sweet moment with his son Ben, who sees him bringing in the gifts. The storyteller has a terrible pain in his back, but he doesn't pay attention to it so as not to ruin the moment. When Claire gets home from work, the narrator asks her to stand on his back to ease some of the stress. Even though she wasn't sure at first, she makes a joke and agrees. Claire and the narrator share a rare and close moment of love while laughing together and being close to each other. The story ends when Claire laughs softly at her husband, and he removes her hair clips in a caring way. About the author. Kennedy was born in the English county of Lincolnshire, but when she was young, her family went to Australia. As a teen, she won a prize for a short story in the Canberra Times. She then went to college to study creative writing. She stopped writing after she graduated, but when she was in her 30s, she started entering short story contests again. Since then, she has written a lot of fiction, including the highly praised collection of short stories Dark Roots, 2006, and won a lot of literary awards. In 2010, her book The World Beneath won the People's Choice Award at the NSW Premier's Literary Awards, and she has won the Age Short Story Competition twice. In her 2005 book Sing and Don't Cry, Kennedy writes about the time she spent traveling and working in rural Mexico. She has also written several books of poems, including Signs of Other Fires, 2001, Joy Flight, 2004, and The Taste of River Water, 2011. In 2013, her collection of short stories, Like a House on Fire, was nominated for the Stella Prize and won the Steel Rudd Award. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.